All that we have belongs to God. All that we have was given to us by God. Our gifts and our talents, our possessions, even our time actually belongs to God. And God just lends those things to us. The one who first brought it up was the associate pastor in my parish of St. Anthony's in Bryan. And I was walking down the sidewalk right beside, outside the church with my mom because she was the director of religious education. She was always over there doing something. So I was 13 years old, walking down that outside sidewalk with my mom, and the associate pastor comes up and he says, Michael, how old are you? And I said, 13. And he said, when I was 13, I entered the seminary. And it's a great life being a priest. You ought to think about it. Think about being a priest someday. I said, okay, I'll think about it. And I did. My name is Bishop Michael Sis. I'm the Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of San Angelo in West Texas. I grew up in Bryan, Texas, in a home where we're five kids in an intact family where my mom and dad are still together. They've been married a long, long time. They're like in their late 80s right now. And all their lives they have practiced the Catholic faith actively. So we would pray in the home. We would go to Mass every Sunday and Holy Day. I was very active in our youth group in our parish. And all of us kids went to religious education classes all the way through the 12th grade because that was just what we did. It was considered normal. My dad is a veterinary professor. He taught for 35 years at Texas A&M teaching the anatomy of cats and dogs. And besides that, he's a Catholic deacon. For, for a number of years, he was in the U.S. Air Force. He's also a proud member of the Knights of Columbus. My mom has done various jobs over the years, and I would say the two principal ones that have left a deep impression on me are first of all the fact that for many years she was the director of religious education in my home parish, where she was helping all the catechists to learn how to be better catechists and organizing the program of the faith formation for our church, for our young people. She also served for many years in our local Catholic hospital and other clinics as a medical transcriptionist. I would say uh, my relationship with God, I owe it to my mom and dad for raising us to be believers and active Catholics. When I went to college, I went to the University of Notre Dame in Indiana. My first year in college, I was not a seminarian or anything. I was just a regular student at the university. In fact, I was on an Air Force ROTC scholarship. But I got a spiritual director whom I met with regularly. And I was active in the church, at serving at the altar and reading at the basilica. At some point in my first year of college, I wrote to the Bishop of Austin, Bishop Harris. And I said, I'm a student here at Notre Dame. I'm enjoying it. I'd like to stay here as a student if I could. But would you consider allowing me to move into the seminary program? while continuing my studies here. Could, would you consider me to be your seminarian? And he decided yes. So I stayed there my sophomore, junior, and senior years, continued my studies at Notre Dame, but in the seminary program, studying as a seminarian for my home diocese of Austin. And that was a wonderful experience of, of learning, studying philosophy, and all kinds of other subjects while seriously discerning the priesthood. What I found most life-giving in my ministry as a priest would start with celebrating the sacraments. I love celebrating any sacrament. It's just a beautiful experience of the presence of God in people's life. I like people, I love God, and so celebrating the sacraments is a wonderful combination of both of those loves. And so I especially enjoy celebrating the Mass with people, celebrating baptisms, weddings, confirmation, all kinds of different sacraments. I enjoy celebrating the sacrament of penance with people. One of the most meaningful experiences for me is hearing people's confessions. In fact, I've often thought that if I did nothing else as a priest, if all I did was hear confessions, I would be perfectly content if that were my only duty every day. Because it's just a, such a beautiful application of the grace of being a priest with the real needs of people 
and the action of the Holy Spirit in people's lives. And to be able to witness that is such a privilege. Now there are some things in this world that God has in mind for you to do in this world that nobody else in this world can do but you. And that requires you putting your talents to good use. If anybody so what is, is interested in considering us? the priesthood, there are certain things that I highly recommend that you do. One of them is you pray, you read the Bible, pray with the Bible, study the Bible. Get a spiritual director with whom you can meet on a regular basis, maybe once a month or once every two or three months. Good spiritual direction is really essential to that discernment process. You should regularly receive two sacraments on a regular basis, Holy Communion and the Sacrament of Confession on a regular basis so that you can keep the grace of God flowing in your life. It's also good to know some priests and talk with some priests and get to know some seminarians and ask them what their experience is like. Also, it's very important to be doing some spiritual reading so that reading some of the classic spiritual writers of our Catholic tradition, you can get in touch with how to develop your relationship with God, how to grow in holiness. And that stuff is really at the core of the preparation for priestly ministry. Our culture, in many ways, is contrary to our beliefs. To live as a practicing, believing Catholic Christian in today's world means swimming against the stream sometimes. It means being countercultural. And so, if our Catholics are going to be supported in that challenge, they need the help of their priests. So, they need priests that they can trust. They need priests who are well educated, who can help answer their questions. And they need priests who are available to them when they need them. And they need priests who can inspire them to stand up for their faith and explain their faith and invite others to join us in our faith. Even in the midst of a society that is oftentimes contrary to being an active Catholic Christian.